So everyone absolutely struggles with rejection. And what I'm going to go over in this video is how you can handle rejection in a very stoic manner. Now, this video is essentially a continuation from a video that I did much earlier in the week. And I'm also dedicating this video to, uh, to a guy who I'm actually going to be working with in either like June or July with Christian. And we had a great discussion uh, underneath this video, which I will get to. Um, but I'm going to just, I think, bring everyone up to date and uh, give you guys a bit more context for this video, because it's going to just be so useful to every guy who is going out to cold approach and struggles with every possible scenario of rejection, maybe you're even future proofing scenarios. And this exercise, if you can stay tuned at least till the end of this video, because I will cover a lot, um, it's going to be very, very beneficial for you and see that there really isn't anything to, uh, to stress over. So the video in question that I, I put out earlier this week was called uh, an analytical strategic approach to overcoming your anxieties around women. And in this video, I kind of gave my like five step plan to actually reviewing a situation that you might have with your anxiety and then get you to actually think about, well, what exercises could I do to work on it? So for example, if let's say you're struggling to just go over and approach someone, then perhaps then if you were to kind of give that a rating out of 10, how anxious you are, then if it's something like a high number, like an eight or a nine, let's say, then perhaps you should go out and just practice the stop. Get good at that. Don't worry about trying to have conversations with people. Just get good at the stop. And then when you do get to that point when you're good, then, you know, or comfortable with it, I should say, then, you know, move on to the next step, which would be giving a compliment, asking for directions and so on. Because for a lot of guys, that can still be a very big step. So I, I like the idea of taking incremental steps with things. So I gave examples and whatnot in this video. And in fact, uh, underneath uh, this uh, viewer, Richie, as I say, I'm going to be working with him uh, in a couple of months time. Um, he'd asked some questions and uh, uh, everything's a little bit scattered here where we had a few um, a few sort of almost starting chats. Uh, but he'd asked me about, you know, what kind of practical things that I do mindfulness technique wise and how do I incorporate that into strategies with managing anxiety? Uh, and you can kind of, I won't read all of this uh, or go through it too much. You can kind of check it out on the video itself. Um, but the conversation had somewhat developed into uh, Richie essentially kind of pointing out that, you know, when he finds himself in certain situations uh, to approach, he starts um, almost pre-predicting scenarios that are going to play out. And that is what causes him anxiety. So like, one of the things that he pointed out here was um, that, you know, he he's uh, very anxious that the, the women that he speaks to might tell him to sort of F off or that he takes it very harshly if uh, the women say that they have a boyfriend. So he gets the, the boyfriend objection. So that is what led on to me sharing with him an exercise that I'm going to certainly expand on in this video. And I'm actually going to use his examples that he gave as well. And that's what he's sort of shared here. So, so Richie had said, uh, that's something that I need to train uh, all the time. Um, I, I think my biggest fear is a harsh blowout. And by that, I mean like really harsh, like F off. Never happened to me before. 90% of the time I used to get a normal social reaction. Uh, the worst were like, sorry, I don't have time, but I'm quite terrified at the thought, fragile me of a harsh rejection. Uh, and then you actually say somewhere else about with the uh, the boyfriend uh, thing. Um, but I, I replied with, okay, we can work on this. Uh, and, um, and, and again, this is what I'm gonna cover really in this video. But my response was, uh, I want you to think about what it means to be rejected. What does it say about you if a lady says that she's not interested or ignores you? Then consider in these moments what's in your control and what's out of your control. 
I want you to think about it, even perhaps write it down, uh, all of the possible rejections that you could experience from the mild to the very extreme and right next to them, which is likely or not likely to happen and what you can potentially do to mitigate that scenario playing out. And lastly, write down how best to handle the situation if it does happen. So this is what I'm going to go over. Um, and um, uh, if I just sort of scroll to it. So this is what Richie had given me um, as the scenarios for him. So he said that one uh, would be that he get, just gets a total ignore. Uh, then he would get maybe a more polite ignore, which would be like a no thank you. I'm not interested. Um, then he'd get the more, I, I, he's put the nice guy rejection. I'd call it more like the, uh, the sarcastic kind of like, oh, thank you, that that kind of thing. Uh, then he's put the boyfriend objection and then he's put extreme rejection swearing. So I'm going to take this uh, a step further and we're going to kind of turn this into um, into more of a diagram. So as you can see, right, I've now got the uh, this diagram here, uh, essentially just kind of showing in a much sort of nicer way uh, of what uh, Richie was very kind to share here, just in a diagram, just to kind of indicate um, a more structured level of these points that he's made about the different rejection scenarios that he's experienced. And most likely every other guy has experienced as well. So you've obviously got starting at the mild, working your way up to the more extreme. So what is what has been interesting here that I did at least notice uh, for you, Richie, is that you've actually counted swearing as being the most extreme. Now, I actually wouldn't count this as the most extreme. I would still say this is probably somewhere in the middle between mild and extreme. And, uh, and I will demonstrate that as to why. So part of with the exercise that I gave you with this was to essentially really kind of like push the limits of like how extreme could these scenarios be? Now, to be fair, that's my fault because there's only really so much you can kind of get across with uh, with typing in a, in a YouTube comment. But I wanted to expand on this more because right now we're seeing... Uh, uh, being ignored as uh, a zero or a one and swearing essentially being considered a 10 as the most extreme kind of rejection or scenario that could play out here with a rejection. So I'm going to just tweak this just a little bit. So with a bit of, uh, with a bit of Photoshop magic, I've now created uh, a much more in-depth um, rejection scenario graph that could be playing out here because realistically these are all the things that many guys um, are certainly going to have at the back of their minds uh, I know these are the scenarios that for me over the years was always a problem and I will go through them um, but you know past you know someone swearing at you and telling you to, to f off then you start going into uh, I'd say more uh, aggressive scenarios that could play out. So starting with what essentially would be uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. So a six out of 10 would be then that uh, you go and stop someone and she is really pissed off. Like she is in a really bad mood and you have now become the person who she is going to take all of her anger out on. So she might just start swearing, saying all sorts of profanities at you and you're just going to be like absolutely bewildered and like, oh my God, what what have I just walked into? Um, so suddenly then like swearing, someone just telling you to F off actually isn't so bad and even getting the boyfriend objection really isn't so bad. But aggression for me, that was always, I think, when I first started, that was like one of the big ones that really scared me. And even the next one as well, this idea that if you stop someone and then they would be just so petrified of the idea that you've even just said hello, that they I'd imagine like they'd pull out a mace and just start spraying me. Now, this idea happened simply from watching just too many comedy movies and uh, just seeing the scenario where you've got like 
the good guy he's probably gone over to ask for like some table soup salt from like a from a, another customer in a restaurant and then suddenly the woman's like oh my god oh my god it's just you know and then there's like screaming and he's on the floor and then uh the attention is drawn on him and everyone's looking over and this I, I mean, this scares everyone. And it's the idea of social suicide. And, and I don't mean to use a very dark term for it. But as soon as you start bringing in this idea of the spotlight effect, that others are witnessing the rejection playing out, or they are witnessing this scenario that you've created go horribly wrong, that is what really, really amplifies the anxiety that any guy is going to experience. And funny as well, uh, I even remember like in some of the relationships that I've had in the past, very either very early on or, or even in like more recent years, I would always hate the idea of going over and talking to someone still with this idea at the back of my mind that I could end up getting maced. So when I was in relationships and like my girlfriend at the time would say like, oh, Daniel, can you go and just ask that lady for uh, like where we need to go direction wise and stuff? And then I'd be like, well, can can you do it? I feel a bit funny about like asking uh, uh, that, that woman. Uh, she doesn't look like she's probably in the best of moods. Um, now, of course, you know, everyone, there is the uh, the term, uh, you know, the, the whole resting bitch face thing, um, which can certainly add to the complexity of guessing if someone's in a good mood or not. So I'd, sometimes if, if you've got the option, I just wouldn't take the chance and I would just have like my girlfriend go and do it. Uh, and then it would turn out I was absolutely worrying over nothing. But, you know, the it will always be there. So, you know, if if you're wor worried about the idea of like someone swearing at you and saying F off, I can assure you my anxieties were far worse, um, especially back in the day before I had good positive references, experiences that told me that I was worrying over nothing. Um, the shouting out loud, uh, I kind of put this as an eight. Um, again, bringing that awareness to the situation and, you know, then people are watching and looking going like, what is going on here? That does, uh, for me, bring that fear uh, because you just don't know not only how that person you're speaking to is going to react, but also then how people around you are going to react, which then leads on to my other points, which are very, very extreme. I have never, ever seen or heard any of these scenarios happening, which I should certainly throw in. But the idea that there is then police involvement if you've gone to go and stop someone uh, or that you've then been chased by the mob. But what's interesting is that actually I, you could argue that, you know, being maced, shouts out loud, uh, police involvement and being chased by the mob, they are more, they aren't really so much what would happen in the approach. They would happen more or less after the approach. Excuse me, like as if maybe you've done something wrong in the scenario that actually would cause this ripple effect of these other things happening. But you can kind of see here that then by creating such extremes and even just having a bit of fun with these extremes, um, those first five don't seem so bad. Like if we were to compare the extreme to the mild, you know, being ignored or her not hearing what you said actually really isn't that bad than being maybe chased by a mob with like pitchforks and chasing after you going like how dare you talk to this woman on the street you know so it really isn't that bad same with the polite no thank you um that is going to be certainly much more appealing than uh the police getting involved and saying what are you doing what are you saying to this woman how, why why have you upset her what what's going on here uh what do you think you're doing you know all, all of these, really, these lower ones, these milder ones, just aren't so bad. So really, the, the purpose, at least with this first kind of diagram, is to just show you that through a much more stoic mindset and almost chronologically ordering all of these rejections that you can have, you can kind of see that the rejections that you listed for me really aren't as bad as they could be. 
they're not as bad as someone starting to swear and taking their anger out on you uh, or being maced or shouting out, uh, someone shouting and screaming out loud for attention or police involvement or being chased by a mob. You know, someone swearing at you, F off, really isn't that bad. Someone saying to you, I've got a boyfriend, really isn't that bad. So without sounding like a broken broken record with it, you know, just creating that comparison, uh, I want you to just see that what you're experiencing are just the mild rejections. And those are really the only rejections that you will ever get. I've never seen really any of those top five, definitely those top four never play out. Um, the only time I have really only ever seen an aggressive situation play out, uh, I think actually probably more recently this year, when I was filming with Christian, um, he'd approached two women uh, in Monument and he'd had a re we'd had a really great session. And this was actually like one of the last approaches that he did. So talk about then a shift in energy somewhat almost after that. But he'd approached two women and he'd they were both very attractive. He'd complimented them both, but he'd asked for one of the girl's phone numbers. She'd then said that she was in a relationship. And then he then had asked the other girl uh, for her number instead. And basically, she just got super pissed off that she wasn't pissed off. Uh, she wasn't picked first. And then her friend kind of like joined in with both being very harshly criticizing Christian um, and um, and and he, like, a, like a true pro, he handled it very, very well, which I'm going to go over on the stoicism side because I've got more charts to go through, but he handled it very, very well. Now, for most average guys, they would be broken for it, um, but because of the experience that he had and he knew how to handle each kind of situation or rejection that he would come up, um, he he breezed through it and actually walked away very easily with his head held high. So that is just, you know, the rejection scenario here. And first of all, just getting you to see that, you know, between the ignore up to swearing, that's not as bad as you think it is. It's not as bad as it could be. Um, that much is certain. So just moving on to the next chart, I want to now take a much more stoic approach to this. And one of the key elements of stoicism is essentially becoming aware of the things that you have control over in your life and the things that you don't have control over in your life. And it's really important to be able to differentiate the two and also to recognize again what is in your control and what isn't in your control because the things that are in your control you can obviously change the things that aren't in your control there is no point worrying about it there is no point stressing over it but it does give you at least some awareness of what situations could play out and what kind of mental and physical preparation could you do to have yourself ready for those scenarios if they do play out and when they do and if they do, you know how to handle them. And in fact, there's something to be said in that, that and that can actually cause or bring down your anxiety when you are prepared. You know, if you think about when someone's done like a presentation in front of a class or in front of a, a, a large group of people, if you aren't prepared if you haven't gone over your script or if you haven't gone over the powerpoint slides that you've created then you are going to be like standing there in front of all these you know people who are going to be glaring at you judging you giving you that spotlight effect and you aren't going to know how best to handle that situation whereas if before that event you have practiced a dozen times, you know your content inside and out, you have also somewhat prepared for what the typical questions might be that people might ask, you will handle it so much better. And that is what I want you to end up doing with at least this next part of the exercise. And again, I want other guys who are watching this, maybe also take notes um, or also uh, even with this first example that I did of with the rejections, 
maybe even list your own rejections as well. Give them a chronological order and really push like how extreme would the scenario be for you to be getting a rejection if you cold approach someone and just see how silly it is if it really were to go past a particular point and how very unlikely those scenarios might happen or what why or if those scenarios did happen what are you doing horribly wrong to actually cause them but let, let's go let's go on to this anyway so what is in or out of your control so in your control you've got how you react so when you're talking to someone or when you're about to go over to someone are you going over really jumpy and really like like scared or are you very apologetic excuse me i'm really really sorry I, like i didn't mean to stop you or are you going over very calm and maybe with some uh you know yeah or just just calm i won't say uh with authority because that that's probably in just the behavior wise but uh, you know are you going over very calmly excuse me i i've just got to say you look great okay i'm i'm you know i'm being a bit tongue in cheek here but um but you you kind of get the gist so your emotions are you scared are you happy are you excited your emotions are all in your head you have full control over your emotions more than you might possibly think uh, it kind of reminds me of that scene in the matrix when like uh neo is fighting morpheus um they're in the dojo and then morpheus turns around to him and he says like are you sure that's air you're breathing and uh neo kind of has that realization of like oh hang on a minute um maybe it, maybe it's not you have full control over this and your and how you react it's uh when the more you have the awareness of your anxiety and the more you have that preparation in the situation again you kind of have a bit more control over it. You can question it. Do I really need to be anxious when I'm going over to speak to someone? There's nothing in that scenario that looks like it's going to play out, especially if I'm going to go over a pro in a really calm manner. There's nothing that's going to really happen that should trigger such a crazy reaction. Your behavior. Are you going over respectfully or intimidatingly? So, if you're going over and just saying like, excuse me, I'm really sorry. I've just had to stop you very quickly just to say respectful. No one's going to turn around really and be like, oh, F off, you know, unless they're in a bad mood, which then kind of would go into the out of control uh, scenario there. Um, and then lastly, how you present yourself. You know, are you dressing uh, well? Are you trying to make a really good first impression? Are you staying fresh? Are you wearing cologne or smelling good and looking good and looking really groomed? Uh, oh, I did mention as well with the, the behavior one, um, you know, with the intimidation one, like are you, in fact, it ties in, but I mean, are you going over and being very intimidating, like getting really up close in someone's face and be like, hey, excuse me, stop. You know, um, that can be very scary for someone and of course that's going to cause a much more shocking reaction for them uh and also like if you're dressing in like a hoodie and a tracksuit as well as being very like upfront and in someone's face and being very aggressive then absolutely you're going to get a very scared uh an extreme reaction from someone as opposed to someone just reacting very calmly and what i've noticed i think over the years is that the more you have control over how you react, your emotions, your behavior, and how you present yourself, then the more control you actually can have over the situation of the things that are out of your control. So now let's have a look at what's out of your control. And it's really important to just be aware of things and to just try and train yourself to understand that as these are out of your control, there is no point worrying about them. It's like if you were going on the underground, traveling somewhere and the train breaks down, there's nothing you can do about it. Uh, I've seen people on the trains, they get really stressed, they're really anxious, they're like, oh, I'm going to be late, I know all this and that. And I think that's, that's fine, that's okay. But there's nothing to stress over in the situation. Um, what things could I have done to have prepared better for that situation well like leaving the house earlier and making sure i've got more time if in case 
you know, I'm going to be late somewhere. Um, but again, just if there are things out of your control, and that was an example really, but if there are things out of your control and there is nothing for you to do, don't worry about it. It's not for you to uh, be concerned about. The only things you want to be concerned about are the things of how you react, how emotionally stable you can keep yourself during those uh, chaotic and stressful moments that would normally cause you anxiety. So like for the first one here, I've put environment. The truth is, as soon as you leave your house, you are stepping into pure chaos. But you don't let that bother you. You don't walk out the house and suddenly have a panic attack and believe that, you know, the world is going to come to an end and uh, or fall apart. And, you know, the worst extreme scenarios and things are going to happen to you. The only people that that would happen to are people who are very agoraphobic. And the likelihood is that they won't stay out for very long. Hell, they'll probably already be back in the house by the time they've even come to the conclusion that they need to be back in the house. So when you're out and about, you have to expect that, you know, you are walking into pure chaos. Anything can happen. You could go into London and you might walk into um, a very busy area. It's out of your control. Or you might walk into an area that's very crowded or quiet, or it might there might be a lot of traffic. It might be incredibly silent. The same as you can't control the weather. You can't control the noise. You can't control um, uh, the smells and stuff that are uh, in the environment as well. You know, anything that affects all of your senses, you don't really have control over. Uh, although it would be quite funny if I saw someone literally running around the streets of London with a deodorant to try and try and make things better. But it, it's not going to happen. Um, so you've got no control over the environment and that is okay but you have control over how you react in the environment how you behave in the environment now going into then the women that you're likely going to go and speak to exactly the same things here of what i mentioned with in control that you're gonna not you're not going to be able to control uh with other people you're not going to be able to control other people's emotions. It's out of your control. So you don't know when you're going to go and stop someone if they're in a good mood, if they're in a bad mood. You can't predict it. You don't know what people's uh, experiences of life had been for them. You don't know what their situations uh, have been like, what's happened to them in the day that could make them have a good day or a bad day. You also don't know other people's situations or what their interests or their disinterests are. You have no control over it. So like you mentioned that one of the, um, so R Richie, you mentioned like one of the uh, rejections that uh, that you would take to heart would be, you know, if a, if a woman would say that she had a boyfriend, but you don't know if actually she does have a boyfriend. So it could be the scenario that a lot of the women that you're speaking to are in relationships. It is very possible when you're talking to people on the street, it's a lottery of scenarios that can play out. And one of which, and it's a very common one, is if she says that she has a boyfriend. If she's got a boyfriend, she's got a boyfriend. You don't know if that's true or not, but it's out of your control. It's not for you to worry about. Because at the end of the day, her saying that she's got a boyfriend might also be doing you a favor. You might not be her type. Um, she might also say that she's married or that she has a crush on someone or, like I say, that you aren't her type. And in fact, then, if her saying that she's got a boyfriend could be doing you a favor, you could be getting the benefits here of not wasting your time trying to date someone who's actually not interested in you. Now there's also then behaviors. You've got no control over if when you stop her, if she's gonna be polite or rude, if she might be very gentle, if she might be very aggressive, if she might have more of a feminine energy or a masculine energy, or if she mixes between all of them, it can fluctuate. Um, and also what I haven't put on here, which can also be a possibility, 
is that when you go and stop someone, you also don't know if it's their time of the month or not. And, you know, and I hate to kind of like point it out, but sometimes if you catch someone at their time of the month, they are probably the kind of person that actually you should be running a mile from and having a conversation with um, because anything could trigger them. Anything could set a woman off. Um, and it's not me to be nasty or or, or cruel or, or weird about it. Uh, I've met people over the years and even in relationships that I've had. Uh, in fact, maybe any guy who's been in a relationship will tell you if their missus is having their time of the month, you're best to stay clear or try and be as nice as you possibly can just to experience the most minimal aggression and sarcasm that you could probably experience. But again, there is nothing you can do to control someone's emotions, situations, what they like, what they don't like, what their behaviors are, and also their reactions. But even with the reactions, that can be certainly uh, down to how you react. If you react really scared and jumpy when you go and talk to her, women kind of get this, um, in fact, I think anyone who's very empathic, it's probably not fair for me to say just women, but anyone who's very empathic, they will then also act the same way almost, or that emotion will ripple onto them. So if you're reactive, they'll be reactive. If you're jumpy, they'll be jumpy. So if you can control how you react, then actually you can somewhat throw a bit of control over the things that aren't in your control. So that is just to get you just that one bit step further to really consider that, you know, with the different rejection scenarios that you've got here, that there are the elements that are in your control that can create and change these rejection scenarios. And there are things that are out of your control that can uh, that can change or create these scenarios. So just going that one last step further, I want to then look at how you can properly plan and uh, create a strategy for each scenario. And this is where stoicism uh, really does come into play. This idea of being fully aware of every situation that could play out and considering what could you do to try and prevent that situation and also what can you do to handle that situation if it can't be escaped, if it can't be prevented. So I've only done here as an example and to be honest if we were probably sitting together or having a session together and we'll probably end up doing this um, in uh, June or July anyway, when we're walking to around, around together and I'm filming you doing your approaches. But uh, we would probably end, end up maybe tweaking these, but I've just given examples here of what I would do in those scenarios. So uh, even for what you can do at home and even for other guys watching, I want you to maybe even create uh, this same chart as well um, rejection list at the top and then prevent the situation and handle the situation and then all of the different rejection scenarios that you've got whether you've got the same as Richie here or maybe you've got others that I didn't consider or maybe what Richie didn't consider write them down in the list and have them all on the side so I've kind of put these in a chronological order for you, Richie. So starting with the ignore, no thank you, and maybe not interested, to the sarcastic kind of response of like, oh, thank you, oh, that's really kind, that's really sweet, to the boyfriend objection, like, I'm sorry, I've, I've got a boyfriend, or I'm married, I'm not interested, uh, or the swearing, like, like no, fuck off, I, I, I don't talk to me, that sort of thing. So let's just go through these. So first of all, uh, we've got if she ignored you or didn't hear you. So on the prevent situation, I put that you need to maybe speak louder, clearer with more conviction to get her attention first before continuing to talk. And to handle the situation, 
decide whether or not you want to reapproach. So if let's say she ignored you and um, just carried on walking by uh, or accept that she didn't see or hear you. Um, so then, yeah, you can go back and maybe go and talk to her or, or stop her or re-get her attention or wait till you have her undivided attention, then speak. So basically with like what I'm saying with these is that perhaps when you went to go and stop her, she had her headphones on or she was in autopilot and just wasn't focusing her attention on this idea of someone talking to her. You have to give people the benefit of the doubt with that. And by also taking responsibility for your own actions, you can see here that then maybe you need to have more conviction with what you're saying. You need to speak but much clearer. You also need to speak louder as well because you also get guys who maybe speak a bit too softly. That could be the reason why she didn't hear you. You spoke too quietly or mumbled or something. And she was like, what? What, what did you say? So taking ownership over your situations as well can be a great way to just liberate yourself from some of these anxieties. And also, again, through the use of stoicism by looking at how you can prevent and handle the situations, all kind of like ties in with each other quite nicely. So what if she says then, no, thank you, I'm not interested and walks away. So to me, with this kind of uh, uh, rejection scenario as well, this uh, also kind of reminds me of like charity workers when they're on the street. You know, they are constantly getting rejections when they go and stop people because people know when they're walking by that they're going to try and get something taken from them. You know, when you've got like the charity workers say like, oh, hey, you know what? You look great today. Oh, look at that smile on you. Oh, can I just have two minutes of your time? And you're like, no, thank you. I'm not interested. Now, even in that job, if they were to take it to heart getting these rejections, they would be done probably within like five, 10 minutes. They wouldn't be able to handle the job. They'd be quitting, but they become very desensitized to it because they're then just used to understanding and uh, reading the situation that if someone's walking fast, they're in a rush somewhere, or if they're not making eye contact with me, then they're certainly not interested in having a conversation. Or if they do hold eye contact, then perhaps, you know, when I make my delivery of my opener to them, they are, are most likely going to say something where they aren't going to be interested because most people don't really want to stop and have a chat with a charity worker. So, you know, they get very, very used to it. Now, I bring that up because uh, one of the things or one of the key successes for charity workers or, or the people when they are standing and stopping people on the street is that they try and get to the point faster. Some of the best um, uh, charity workers who do the cold approaching are the ones who say, look, excuse me, I've got to say you look great, but uh, don't want to waste your time. Can I just uh, give you my, my, my two minute speech about this charity or about this cause that I'm interested or helping with? And usually I would say like statistically, I've seen better chances of successes of stops than I have with people who are saying like, oh, excuse me, you look really great today. Oh, wow, I really love this. Because you know that they're kind of lying through their teeth. They're trying to be very manipulative uh, to get you to, to stop. So it's, it's something just to consider if maybe you are uh, trying to be a bit too like, like, excuse me, you look absolutely amazing today. Oh, I've just got to like stop you and say this. Sometimes being just very direct and to the point and getting there faster can at least beat the um, the this um, the uh, the statement being said of the uh, no thank you I'm not interested. Um, you know, going over and stopping saying, look, excuse me, I'll be really, really quick. Uh, I'll, or excuse me, I'm going to be really bold and direct here and just say, you look absolutely amazing. I'm actually in a rush. Can I get your number? Now that can be really good if you're reading the situation that someone's actually in a rush. Um, so just being more clearer to the point uh, or possibly faster, as well as calmly walking away if she is either busy or just not, or you're not her type. So the scenario plays out that she says, no, thank you. I'm not interested. Then there's not really much you can do. There's no point trying to, 
you know, persuade her otherwise to say like, um, like no, actually you do, you want to be interested in stuff because then it comes across very needy. So actually, if someone says, no, thank you, they're not interested. That is okay. Because there's a possibility that maybe it's just the wrong kind of day to go and stop her. It could be a case that if it was the day before or the day after, she'd be open to having a conversation with you. But on that day, there is no point taking it to heart. There is no point letting it bother you. It is out of your control. So you can kindly wish her all the best, have a great day and walk away and be like, you know what? That is absolutely fine. I Maybe I wasn't her type. Maybe she's just having a really bad day. Maybe she's had uh, a bad morning. Maybe she is having bad relationships with people. Maybe she's had an argument with her boyfriend. You don't know. And I don't think guys really consider, you know, the situations of the women that they're speaking to. Um, and also, I don't think guys maybe realize that women aren't as confident as you might think. You know, cold approaching strangers isn't really a normal for everyone. And for the guys who do get very desensitized to cold approaching, you know, you are going above and beyond what most men are even capable of doing and getting yourself to a level that's so desensitized to what, you know, most men are usually ever even consider reaching, especially in self-actualization. So you always have to at least try and be somewhat sympathetic or empathetic to any woman that you are speaking to, because again, you just don't know what is going on in their lives or in their, their situation. So it's about just making sure how you handle each situation again. Sarcasm, um, speak with more authority or take ownership of the sarcasm and match it calmly and walking away with a smile. So like with what I mentioned with Christian earlier, um, that was exactly the case. He, he matched their sarcasm. He knew that they were being sarcastic to him. So he went along with it. He owned it. And even uh, self, I think the word self-deprecation kind of like made fun of himself as well. He owned it. Now that takes practice to do. So that might be then something tied in with my other video and doing that as an exercise, like going out and practicing self-deprecation. <laughs> Oh, dear me, that the hiccups. Um, uh, and what kind of ways would you go about doing that? So, great, definitely, or maybe I'll even try and like uh, put a link in the description below um, to that video. I'll have to try and find it on Christian's channel, or maybe I might reach out to him and ask him. But, um, but you know, again, with sarcasm, it's very much out of your control. There's not really much you can do if someone's either being emotionally childish or they're just being rude um, and, uh, and and unnecessary, especially if you've gone over and you've given a compliment to someone. Um, that It says more about them than it does about you. If you've gone over being very respectful, calm, um, you know, and, um, and delivering a really great compliment and doing something that no other man would have the balls to do. And take ownership with the sarcasm and match it if that's something that you are able to do, then do it. Otherwise, alternatively, just smile, walk away, wish them all the best. There's no point being reactive otherwise. There's no point being angry or moody. Again, you don't know what has happened to that person for them to have that kind of personality or emotion in that moment. Uh, the next one with the boyfriend objection I put here there's nothing available. It is out of your control. You can't prevent a situation if someone says that they've got a boyfriend. If you've gone over and been respectful, you've gone over, presented yourself in the best possible way. If she's got a boyfriend, she's got a boyfriend. That's 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 kind of it. And if she says that she's got a boyfriend and you're unsure if that's true or not, then what you can do with handling the situation with this is cheekily ask her about her relationship ask her how it's going or show genuine interest in that relationship. And if she gives you good solid answers with it, then say that her boyfriend is a lucky man. That's something that I like to do. And then wish her all the best and have a good day or jokingly say, well, look, if things turn out horribly wrong, let's meet here exactly in seven days at this exact same time and uh, we'll continue uh, going for it then. 
you can do that. And bear in mind, there are plenty of single women out there and there will be women who absolutely love the version of you that you are now. Even if you're not that confident or even if you're super confident or ballsy, you know, the fact that you are still doing something that not many men are doing, she will appreciate that. And I think the the reason why women will get so much more attraction for a guy is simply down to the fact that he's putting effort into wanting to meet her and talk to her. And that is what separates, you know, the men who do get results to those that don't get results. And I did do another video on that as well. So the last one then with swearing, if you're speaking to her uh, respectfully, um, then and you're avoiding being any kind of offense, uh, giving any sort of offense possible, then you should be able to avoid that kind of scenario playing out. Um, but otherwise, if it does turn out that, you know, she does start swearing, then just calmly wish her a good day. Or uh, you can assume that maybe she is having a bad day. Why not offer her support and say, well, wow, you know what? I must have caught you uh, at a time when things are going wrong. Is everything OK? Be it just showing a bit of empathy and sympathy can also turn things around. And um, and there's nothing wrong with that. I think guys kind of get a bit like, like, oh, no, I must be dominant. I must be really like, like serious when I talk to people. But there is nothing wrong with actually showing support for another human being. And in fact, it actually demonstrates leadership skills and can be very masculine if you're looking to support a partner and be there for them. And you'll also be amazed then actually how you can turn things around a full 180 um, and someone who was then really, really mean to you can say, you know what? I was like, I'm really sorry. Like, I've, I've just been having like a really bad time with this. I didn't mean to, uh, to say that stuff to you. You know what? I love the fact that you've uh, come over and talked to me. Sure. Let, let's go on a date sometime, especially once I've cleared my head and I've got this stuff out of the way. Now I have actually seen that scenario play out where people haven't been in the best of moods or they've had like a bad day or some, they've been approached and they were just really sad and not in the mood. You know, I've heard all sorts of 180 stories that have turned that around. So just kind of recapping everything with this, we looked at, first of all, those five rejection scenarios that Richie had. I then expanded on them and kind of turned them into 10 and had them set in a chart to show like the most mildest up to the most extreme to basically show that those five that Richie had uh, or the ones that you had, Richie, just really aren't that bad. They could be far worse. So they really aren't as bad as you think they are. And they're also things that aren't in your control. There, th there are things that you can certainly control about yourself with your emotions, how you react and your behavior and how you present yourself to women that you're speaking to. But also there are things then not to worry about and to just be aware of and to definitely try and learn not to stress over how she reacts, how her personality is, how her behavior is, uh, the environment that you're in as well. Learn to just be comfortable with them and learn almost to just let go of them and not worry about them. Only control or only worry or concern yourself with the things that you are in control over. And to help with that, by at least being able to have an idea of how you could potentially prevent that rejection scenario playing out and also how you could potentially handle that situation if that scenario plays out, can just get you more mentally prepared for those situations. And you'll find as well by even maybe practicing or rehearsing like, okay, right, if, if this scenario plays out, what am I going to do? Whether you practice on your own, maybe with a friend, with a wing, or hell, even if you're going to go to a dating coach uh, or even working with me as well, just practicing those different things can make you more prepared for handling those situations. And I can promise you, it's very difficult to be anxious about a situation when you know how to handle it uh, almost in autopilot. Like when you learn to drive a car, you learn about the gear shifts and the gas and the brake and the clutch, you learn how to deal with it. It becomes effortless. It's not stressful. 
because you become comfortable with it and you become comfortable driving on the street, looking at the mirrors, indicating and so on. So before I start kind of waffling and going down any other um, uh, metaphors of sorts there, that I will wrap the video there. I really hope this has been beneficial for you, Richie, and certainly for other guys watching this. But more importantly, if you can learn to just handle or, or predict and prepare for any situation, there is no reason why you can't overcome your anxiety in it. And this is a very stoic method, so I highly recommend doing it. But other than that, I've been Dan, that dating anxiety guy. If you can, please like the video, subscribe to the channel. I'd love to hear your thoughts underneath this video as well so if you can comment below that would be great and show your support for the channel if you can but other than that thank you very much for watching and look forward to the next videos coming out from me